Brent Reed, hey, Nash. <laughs> I struggle with not giving a fuck. Any advice would be appreciated. I love your podcast with Sean, and I'm thankful for you being a role model and a good person and helping me as I also have an autistic son. Bless you both. So Brent is struggling with not giving a fuck. we got to give a fuck because you have an autistic kid. So you got to... I mean, I, I understand if uh, sometimes you, you we run out of uh, energy and you, you, you go into a, a funk and it's like, I don't give a fuck. But no, you got you got to give a fuck until you're in a position where you have bought um, yourself some time not to give a fuck. You know, if you're, if maybe if just you're, selectivity about what to give a fuck about. Yeah, if you're living, if you're living fucking month to month, and, and to keep a roof over your family's head, you, you know, I mean, there's, there's, you cannot give a fuck on on things that aren't you know of of significance. But you you have to. I, I just believe in in in, be, in being a, like the way I, like the way Bob raised me was. The man takes care. Like you, you give birth to a child, you take care. That's your family. You take care of them, and you know. Now, whether or not you give a fuck how hungover you go to work is up to you. <laughs> Just as long as you go to work. Is the thing you're most proud of, um, being the dad you were to Tristan? Of all the things, I mean, you've accomplished a lot. I think I was. I think I was a good dad. I think that I was. I was thinking about it today, and I was thinking about when he got sick and he was in the hospital for those months, and just you know, a lot of time. A lot of times, I, it, 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 during COVID, there would just be one. Uh, a lot of times, we were able to pull it off. Or they, they would let me and Tamara, but some days, they would only let one of us go over, and I would. I would drive over every day and see him. And I just know that in his heart, like he never, we like we never had to have a, you know, like, like that, you know, the speech or anything. But he, I know he appreciated, and I know that he knew that how much his his dad loved him. And uh, I wish, you know, I wish it, there's just so many things I I would do I would do different, uh, you know, in hindsight, but. Mm-hmm. You know, when you when you grow up and you're a pro wrestler, and you have a kid that's you know, is is watching you, and you just you really don't think of, you know, like the the the, the story of eating thirty three somas in Nashville is is ha ha funny until some kid hears that story and eats thirty four and fucking doesn't wake up. So it's like the most of us are most of us that that made it through that era are lucky to be alive. I think that the the business was unforgiving. I think it was a uh, it's a blueprint for uh, for disaster. Mm-hmm. Uh, just how anybody is supposed to keep a relationship going uh, twenty seven days on the road and three or four days off. And, you know, month after month, year after year, how you're supposed to keep, you know, keep a family and, and keep a wife and and keep a life that's of, of any kind of uh, normalcy is just, and that's the whole thing. Like, you know, somebody says that I've, I've lost touch of, of what a million dollars is. Motherfucker, you've lost touch on what I did for a living and how I made my money. And you might think a million dollars is a lot, but what what the fuck I gave up in my personal life to make that money, it's like blood diamonds, blood money. I was was paid a fraction. There'll be a guy tonight playing for the Lakers that'll go in and play six minutes and probably is making this season more than I made my entire fucking 30 years. So if I'm out of touch, what the fuck is he? You know? Did you um? Did you hear echoes of Bob ever 
as when while you were a dad like my dad my dad died when I was 15 and even today like you know sometimes I'll do a little comparison uh my I, dad I think he did a great job with me but uh I sometimes use that as a barometer for how I'm doing with my kids where yeah. did Bob fit into all that I, I think because I had such a short time with him um but my dad loved scaring people like he just absolutely loved fucking and, and I've taken that like I love to scare people like I will fucking hide in your closet for two hours and jump out with a knife just to give you a fucking heart attack oh literally like prank yes oh. yes <laughs> Fuck yes, man. Hide under a bed and grab your leg when you come in the room. I mean. Bob Nash. I seem as a serious cat. I didn't. Uh... No, Bob Nash would do this thing where fucking he'd drag his foot coming down the hallway. And he knew he was coming. And he'd fucking, he'd, he'd put his, his top coat where he was like the headless horseman. Like he'd pull his top coat all the way up. And then take the flashlight and hold it underneath him and have a big butcher knife in his hand and fucking walk into the room. Me and my brother would be in our fucking <clears throat> bunk bed screaming at the top of I never understood this as long as I live. You got a six foot six, three hundred pound dad, and you have a nightmare in the middle of the night, and you go, Mom! 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 What the fuck, right? Not because dad. Because you're not looking for protection, you're looking for comfort, and that's what mom was. I don't know, man. If fucking somebody's chasing you and your fucking feet are sticking in the stairs coming up the fucking basement. That's when I want Bob. Yeah. That's yeah. when I want Bob. Not, I, don't want, I don't want my mom, and that's what my dreams were always. How many times have you gotten a dream where you get in a fight, and you every, like, me and T used to talk about this all the time because he used to have the same dream. where Like you throw a punch at somebody, and like this is the person he goes, Boom. like you have no power. It's just yeah. like you're like fucking. It's like you're you're throwing a water punch at them. You know, there's just nothing there, and they're clocking you. Mine is often, uh, mine is often the uh, false dialing the phone. I keep fucking up the number. Like I'm trying to dial for help or something. Oh, that's just me on a daily basis with my dyslexia. <laughs> <laughs> Barney Rubble with his technology over here. Look, I got, I got, I got to write the number down and then fucking look at it before I send it. I'm like, oh fuck, man, there's no seven in that thing. And I, I always have the actor dream still. I'm always on stage, and I don't know what show I'm in or what the lines are, but I walk into the middle of it, and I have to perform. 